Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hands have provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning, new mercies I see, all I have needed, thy hands have provided, great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning, new mercies we see, all we have needed, God's hands have provided, great is his faithfulness, Lord unto us. Great is God's faithfulness. Great is God's faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hands have provided. Great is His faithfulness, great is God's faithfulness, great is Abba's faithfulness, great is Nisi's faithfulness, great is Shalom's faithfulness, Lord unto me. Great is God's faithfulness, Great is God's faithfulness, morning by morning, new mercies we see, all we have needed, thy hands have provided, great is your faithfulness, great is your Great is your faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Great is your faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Hi, amazing people. It's a chapter a day to keep you going, to boost your faith, to get you know what God has in store for you, to get you ready to do the things you have to do the way you need to do them, what you need to be doing here on earth while you're here, and what will make you stay on track till you end up spending eternity with God in heaven because the whole idea is reconciliation. We had this relationship we have with God. We used to have communion with God like it comes down in the cool of the day and have fellowship with man. And then there was a breakage. Then he decided to come back again and reconcile us back to himself so that we can have that same beautiful fellowship that we used to have. But for now, while you're still alive, while you've accepted Christ as your personal Lord and Savior and you're still alive, you definitely have to hold on and hold out, you know, like that. And so there are rules and regulations, there are principles that you need to follow to be able to hold on and hold out. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what needs to happen. But anyways, so let Jesus take the wheel. Let Jesus just take the wheel. So today on a chapter today, we're going to be reading Exodus chapter 11. Exodus chapter 11 is very short. It has just 10 chapters, 10 verses. <gasps> 
10 verses. So let's hand over the session to God. And after handing over the session to God, we're definitely going to do the birthday party before we do the Bible party. So let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this beautiful day that you've made. We'll rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for all the amazing things that have happened to us. The tough times, the difficult moments, the challenging moments, the ones that have come and it felt like it was going to break us to pieces. It was going to shred us to pieces, but you gave us a victory. You brought us through, oh God. Father, I just want to say thank you. I want to just give you all the praise, all the glory and honor because you deserve it. Father, I pray for all those who are fighting really tough battles. I pray that you're going to give them the grace to scale through smoothly. You are the God who always answers prayers. When there is people to pray, there is a God to answer. So I believe that you've heard and answered our prayers. So take the will, take it from my hands. I can't do this on my own. Increase while I decrease so that it's going to be you that will be seen, heard, and felt. In Jesus' mighty and blessed name, I pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen and amen. Okay, people. <laughs> um, God help us. Help us. Today has been one interesting day. Like a really, really interesting day in my life. But I'm thanking God because he always gives us victory. The one extra beautiful thing that happened today. I spoke to my mom and she was smiling like all the way. She wasn't laughing today like so much because she was eating. Of course, I didn't expect her to be laughing while she was eating. She could choke up on food, but she was smiling all the way. And I was just saying all these beautiful things to my mom that I believe that God is going to help me do for her. Sometimes our moms and our parents don't really need us to do much. Sometimes they just want us to tell them, to reassure them that we love them, we're still there for them, we'll be there for them anytime that they need us and stuff like that. And we, we hand it over to God and pray to God to give us the grace to also be there for them while we make those promises. Because it's a terrible thing to make a promise that you can't keep. So while you're making the promise, you ask God to give you the grace to be able to keep the promise. You ask God to give you all that it takes, all that is necessary to be able to keep the promise. So I was talking to my mom today and she was smiling like from molar to molar. Like, oh my God, it was really cool. I was really happy. When I always speak to my mother, there's probably just this brilliance, this light that lights up my soul and it's just beautiful. I, I don't know how to explain it, but if you love your mom or you love your dad and you speak to them, I don't know if you have that sensation, but I do. So speaking to my mother today, actually just packed up something in my life. I was going through much like the entire day. A lot of things were going through my mind and through my head. And so I actually um, decided to, my sister gave me the honor and she called me. I was talking with her and then she actually just video video called me like she switched the video and then i could talk to my mom i could talk about my mom like she's the best in the world like the best in the whole wide world and if i if i was supposed to come back on earth again i think i'll still choose my mother i've had a lot of people be like a mother to me but i would say with all all joy and unashamedly or unapologetically that if I was to put you come back on earth, I would still want this amazing woman, Madame Dora Kweneli Munga, Mesoso, and all the plenty, plenty names that she has. I would still love her to be my mother. If not for one thing, my mother is a praying machine. I, I mean, her knees should be knuckled right now because she was on her knees all the time. That I'm a child of God today, I know that is part of this woman's prayers on ending. That I know God and I love God. And she still keeps praying for me so hard for some things, you know, that she's worried about. She just prays and God just answers. Like the answers are just pity. They just keep coming. They just keep flowing, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's exactly what has been happening. So yeah, let's just get past my mother. But I'm very excited today because I spoke to my mother. So if you see me having all this like really, really big smile, no, it's because I spoke to my mom. Okay, um, today's the 19th day of November. Oh, I have a countdown of a wedding. I have two friends getting married tomorrow. That is so beautiful. One in Nigeria, one in Cameroon. That's cute. Countdown. I wish them all the best though. 
so let's go um today is the 19th of november and we have two people who were born today no three people were born today mr lloyd newton mr lloyd newton is a friend of mine that i met in ghana we actually got to know each other because there was a certain work that needed to be done by my company and i was sent to go and be um, to represent the company with some other person and so we met these amazing people and mr lloyd newton was one of the amazing people that we met at that place we became really good friends i visited there for some time and uh, i got to know nice places I think it's Mr. Lloyd Newton that actually made me to know and see the Akosombo Dam for real. You know, we studied that in history, the Akosombo Dam. In my country, we studied it in history. And that dam is in Ghana. And I actually got an opportunity to see it physically, like live. It was so beautiful. So I would never forget that. And so he worked with us and I got to know him he was a very nice person encourages me to be my best and he was supporting all the things I was doing all my works and stuff even my videos that I put up he always encourages me with them and all that and then I ended up meeting his sister as well oh my god it was beautiful they're really a lovely family I think I got to know him when uh, um, the lost one of their parents I I really felt so bad I went there for some reason like I could make my way there you know I didn't know Ghana so much but I could make my way there and uh, it was really a sad time but God actually took them through it and so I ended up knowing her sister too they're a beautiful family the Newtons are a beautiful family so happy birthday to you Mr. Lloyd Newton God bless you and then we have mom Juliet Nee Mom Julian Ni. Mom Julian is one of my friends that I got to know on Facebook and we connected really beautifully. She was like my big in school, I believe. If I'm not making mistakes with who this person is, but she was like my big in school. I don't know if it's two or three classes ahead. And she was a very cool person, a very nice person. She had this beautiful smile. She was all very calm and composed. She's um I think introverted, I would say that. She's always very calm and quiet. But she does lovely things. Happy birthday, Mam Giuliani. And the last but not the least, we have Bumi Omisakin. Bumi Omisakin is also one of my friends that we met on social media. How do we meet? You know, there's this thing, I'm a comment section freak. Like, when I read a post, I go to the comment section and I get all the vibes. You get all kinds of angles. So I'm a comment section freak. You could see me on a post that had like 200 comments. I'm there reading all the 200 comments. Especially if I have time. You know, I'll be there reading all the 200 comments or say first 50. I wouldn't miss out. I'll read the comments and be sure what is going on right there. And in the process of reading those comments, I get to see people that think like me, people that um, view things like me, people that have some other very interesting views about the topic and stuff like that. So I get to follow them and add them because I know that I can learn from these people. We kind of meet in the comment section like, time again and again and again and then i just add them you know i send them friend requests and stuff like that so man boom me or mr king was one of such persons I, i'm not sure which which person's um wall we met on if it's the Glowville, if it's um mr anke Lieza, if it's um uh, mr Ijo I don't know who, Omam Olubumi Mabel, I'm not sure which one, but these are people that I follow and they do great on social media. They do great on social media. Mam Winifred Yoma, um, who else? There are just so many people. Mr. Successful Precious, Mr. Precious Golden, Mr. Successful Chimela. These are a couple of people that I follow on social media and they're doing exceptional. So when I'm in the comment section, I actually look for people that view things like me or they have this other interesting perspective about the subject or the issue. So that's what I do. So that's where I met these people. So happy birthday to you all again. Let me take it once again. Happy birthday to you, Mr. Lloyd Newton. Happy birthday to you, Ma'am Juliet. Julian Ni, happy birthday to you, Mam Bumi Omisakin. Welcome, Mam Owere Feyi Sayo. Welcome. Hope I actually pronounced that right. I hope so. If I didn't, forgive me. Forgive my pronunciation. I'm not as good as I should be with pronouncing names, especially names that I'm not very fami familiar with. But I know that Mam Feyi Sayo is actually right. I don't know if it's a lady or a guy, but I'm seeing a female picture. 
So pardon me if I'm mixing this all up. Okay, so let's pray for the birthday people. And after the birthday people, we're going to the Bible party straight up. Like I said, today we're doing Exodus chapter 11. And it has just 10 verses. So it's going to be a very short one. So let's pray for the birthday people. Lord, we bring all these amazing people to you. They are just awesome. These three people who've called their names, Lord, we pray you use them as point of contact to bless every single person who was born on this 19th day of November. Lord, open the windows of heaven, rebuke every devourer, bless them with blessings beyond and without, O oh Lord. Father, do for them only what you can do. Do and undo for them, O Lord. Do great and amazing things for them, O Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, bless them in such a way that the blessings is going to be in their generation and beyond. And anyone who gets in contact with them will be able to rub off of these blessings. Lord, that these blessings is going to so encompass them as a shield round about that no weapon formed or fashioned against them shall prosper. This same blessing is going to cause them to stand before kings, not before mid men, because their gifts are going to make room for them, O oh Lord. They're going to increase in wisdom and statue, gaining favor before God and before men. And Lord, I pray that whenever they need help, help is going to show up from east, west, north, and south. I pray, O oh God, that you're going to cause their destiny helpers to locate them. As much as you open their eyes to see those they are supposed to be destiny helpers to so that they can locate these people and do that which they need to do in their lives, O oh God. Father, any vision killers or anything that is going to kill their vision or cause their vision to be stagnant, I dissociate them from it now in the mighty name of Jesus. I dissociate them from that person and that thing in the mighty name of Jesus. And I decree a divine connection to people and things that will cause them to progress in their place of purpose. I decree and declare a divine connection to the people and things that will cause them to fulfill their divine purpose in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I know there are times as we're fulfilling our purpose, we feel overwhelmed. We feel like we want to give up. We feel like this thing is not working. We feel like we're just wasting our time. Lord, I pray that when any of them gets to that position they're going to hear a clear clean voice that is going to tell them this is the way walk down in it and so when they would do all this and lord all these amazing things you do would happen in their lives lord take to that control take all the glory but now forevermore father i pray oh god that you're going to cause heavens to be opened upon their lives, O oh God. That they are, they, are, they are going to shine brighter and brighter on to the perfect day, O oh Lord. Father, I pray that you're going to give them strategies and techniques to be able to do the things that will be able to transform lives, to be able to do the things that will be able to cause them to continuously leaving out their purpose, which in the end, all oh glory will be given unto your holy name, O oh God. Father, give them strategies to smoothly scale through and not derail from the part, so that in the end each and every one of us is going to be spending eternity with you in heaven to the glory of your name in jesus mighty and blessed name i pray with thanksgiving lord i pray whatever the lay their hands on you prosper it oh god wherever they set, tread their feet upon you give it to them as a possession in the mighty name of jesus Thank you, King of Glory, because I know you never fail. Thank you, King of Glory, because I know you always hear and answer us. Father, write beautiful stories on the pages of their lives, even as they open today. Perfect all that concerns them, O oh God. Father, let whatever it is that you're the one who has decreed in their life come to pass. Cause them to be trailblazers. Excuse me. Cause them to be trailblazers, pace setters, and... Uh, wall changes in the mighty name of jesus lord i know you can do that close them with a the garment of praise honor and favor <coughs> sorry people that money is going to make money in their pockets blessings going to be made blessing in their life favor is going to make favor in their lives in the mighty name of jesus take all the glory both now and forevermore because you deserve it in jesus mighty and blessed name we pray with thanksgiving Thank you, Lord God, because I know you always hear and answer. Take glory, Father. Take glory, Son. Take glory, Holy Ghost, now and forevermore because you deserve it. Father, I pray, O oh God, that you're going to cause this once, O oh God, to sing, dance, and rejoice all their lives because you're going to give them a Psalms 126 state, a state where it's not only the people around them who are going to be in awe when you turn around the captivity. It's going to be them as well who will be in shock, total awe. I mean, the awe is just going to be 
too much for them to handle, oh God, because you're going to do great and mighty things in their lives. Thank you, Lord, because I know you've heard and answered. Cause them to go and conquer their world in Jesus' name. And I pray, oh God, that you're going to open doors and windows of opportunities for them, oh God, that will cause people to see those good works in their lives and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Take preeminence, ever-living God, because you deserve it. In Jesus' mighty and blessed name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 Sing with me now. Amen. 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 Let it be so. Amen. 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 In their lives. Amen. 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 Let it happen. Amen. As we pray. Amen. 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 Whistle the prayers. Amen. 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 With the blood of Jesus. Amen. Let it be so. Amen. 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 Amen, people. Amen. 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 <laughs> I love singing. I love dancing. So you all just need to bear with me. Okay. So today we're doing the Bible party. And it's Exodus chapter 11, and it's from verse 1 to 10. Let's do this. Are you ready? Ready or not? Here I come. Ready, ready, ready. Ready or not? Here I come. Ready, ready, ready. Ready or not? Here I come. Okay, let me be sure that my microphone is working. Okay. Yes, my microphone is set and working. So let's go. Exodus chapter 11, and the Lord said unto Moses, yet will I bring one plague more upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt. Afterwards, he will let you go hence. When he shall let you go, he shall surely thrust you out hence altogether. Speak now in the ears of the people and let every man borrow of his neighbor and every woman of her neighbor jewels of silver and jewels of gold. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Moreover, the man Moses was great in the land of Egypt, in the sight of Pharaoh's servants, and in the sight of the people. And Moses said, Thus saith the Lord, About midnight will I go out into the midst of Egypt, and all the firstborns in the land of Egypt shall die. From the firstborn of Pharaoh that seated upon his throne, even unto the firstborn of the maid servant that is behind the meal, and all the firstborn of beasts. And there shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt, such as there was none like it, nor shall be like it any more. But against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue, against man or beast, that ye may know how that the Lord doth put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. And all these thy servants shall come down unto me, and bow them themselves unto me, saying, Get thee out, and all the people that follow thee, and after that I'll go out. And he went out from Pharaoh in a great anger. And the Lord said unto Moses, Pharaoh shall not hearken unto you, that my wonders may be multiplied in the land of Egypt. And Moses and Aaron did all these wonders before Pharaoh, and the Lord had in Pharaoh's heart, so that he would not let the children of Israel go out of his land. God, you got to be kidding me right now. If I was Moses, I would have already been. <laughs> I'd have gone bonkers. I don't know. Like, I don't know. Like, in the world, they say you can't keep doing the same thing over and over and over, and accept and ex the same and expect different results. That's what they say. You can't keep doing things over and over the same way and you expect the same results you can't keep showing this man miracles and miracles and miracles and he's hiding in his heart and you just keep showing him miracles try another strategy maybe you could try war that's what the people of the world are going to say but you see god's ways are past finding the ways of god are not the ways of man you see he opens this scripture and he starts telling he's telling the people to prepare 
there's a tendency when you're closer to your miracle that some kinds of things start happening and then god is telling you to prepare and then you're getting ready and then it looks like oh you're feeling like oh maybe the next minute this is just gonna happen and then god gives you like some other two days or three days or five years or ten years and you're like god why did you tell me to stop preparing now then you know like that yeah sometimes that's what god does hear what he says he has been telling him all the while he has been telling moses all the while go and do this go and do that and i'll have him first hat then hear how he opens chapter 11 huh and the lord said unto moses yet will i bring one plague more unto pharaoh and upon egypt afterwards he will let you go hence when he shall let you go he shall surely thrust you out hands altogether. Ain't that supposed to be a beautiful thing? So God is telling me that when I go and do this one last miracle, this guy's going to let us go. And then here, he goes back and tells you that. But when you do this, Pharaoh is going to hide in his heart. I would give up. Sincerely, God, I know probably you've given, you had given this Moses guy the grace. I think you've also given me the grace, but humanly speaking i would have given up already i sure would have given up i'm not sure i'm not sure i know i love god i know i trust god i know that i know god's voice but at some point i would have given up man i'm i'm being sincere right now there are some times that i'm holding on to something but i'm not aware i know god has promised and i'm holding on to it but i don't have that assurance that like he keeps reminding me that oh this thing is going to take long before it comes or this thing is going to harden his heart before it comes or this person is going to harden their heart before anything happens no he has never told me like that i've never heard that before so i just think like i'm gonna give up well now that i'm talking about it i think the holy spirit is directing me to somebody that he has given me the job to pray for and i've been praying for the person and it looks like nothing is just happening like nothing at all and i don't know how long that is going to take for me to keep praying for the person and i was almost asking one day that lord how long is this going to happen again and then i prayed sometime and said lord i'm not going to give up until i see the manifestation of the miracle that i'm asking you for it's me who's always telling people that oh your faith is only only as real as faith when we've seen the manifestation because it's up until your faith that the thing that you have been hoping for and believing manifests you can't say you exercise faith nobody's going to believe that you exercise faith if they've not seen manifestation of your faith right that's it what what is the leverage what is there to show us that you had faith nothing we have to see a manifestation to know that you you exercise faith and this is what faith brought you through this is the thing this is the evidence the evidence becomes real you know your reality speak now in the ears of the people and let every man borrow of his neighbor and let every woman of her neighbor jewels of silver and jewels of gold <laughs> And they will go and borrow these things. Like, how long are we supposed to borrow them for? What are we telling them? We're telling them that we're borrowing it to do what with them. You know, probably they had already told them that, oh, they were going to worship their God. They were going to serve their God. So it would have been easy. Plus, they had seen a lot of things that God had done. They had seen a lot of things that God had done. And then God was going to, um, how, how can I put it? so when they go now and go and borrow from these people they don't want to give it because it's like they'll be scared like they don't want any wahala and stuff see that's how god would so prepare your ground for you would so prepare your promised land for you that at some point you'll be collecting the miracles and the gifts and the blessings in such a way that the people will just have to give you like they'll just be they'll just be drawn they'll just be 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 i mean they will just have no rest they will just have to give you whatever they have to give you that's how good god can make things for you when you're waiting when you're trusting him regardless so he tells us people that go and borrow silver and go from these people like who does that slaves going to borrow silver and go like when would they ever give it back when would they ever give it back anyways they knew they were going to give it back and considering the fact that they're seen a lot of things that are happening in egypt and not happening in israel They'll probably have been scared like, oh, if we give them this thing, maybe our lives will be secured. Maybe we'll be saved. Maybe we'll be kept, you know, that kind of thing. So they're probably thinking like that. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Moreover, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt, in the sight of Pharaoh's servants and in the sight of the people. You see, so God had so done a lot of things that it wasn't just about Pharaoh. Very servants now were respecting Moses. Um, the people of Egypt were respecting Moses. You know, 
I mean, like God had just favored these people in the eyes of the Egyptians because the Egyptians probably just had it at the back of their mind that we don't want to dare it. Because if we do anything with these people, it is God that is going to address the matter. And that's how it's supposed to be in life, my people. Dear realities, there are going to be times where you will be innocent, but everything is going to be pointing at you to be guilty. Just let God fight the battle. God loves judgment and he hates robbery. So release God. Like God, release your judgment. Release a judgment on those people who oppress me. Release your judgment on those people who say I shall not be who I have to be. Let God be the judge. Vengeance is the Lord. Let God be the one to release vengeance the way he deems sweet. God serves judgment and he serves it hot. He serves it better than anybody would. And so these people were favored and they go on and they're doing stuff and they're doing stuff. These are people that have been treated like so poorly, like terribly, you know, and the, the treatment was getting worse by the day. And then all of a sudden, God is going to still use these people that are punish these people to be a blessing to them. <laughs> Sometimes the people who have so dealt with you badly are the people that God is going to bless you through. Don't be ignorant. Don't be short-sighted. Do not miss the hour of your visitation. God is flexible and he can use just about anybody. Just about anybody to bless you. God can use just about anybody to bless you. So don't get it twisted. Don't get it mixed up. Don't confuse it. God can use just about anybody to bless you. So these are the people here who have been a thorn in the flesh to the Israelites. And now God is actually making this Israelites to gain favor before the Egyptians. Before Pharaoh's servants, Moses now was this great person. Before the Egyptians, Moses now was this great person. That's exactly what is happening. You know, all is well. And Moses said, Thus said the Lord, About midnight would I go out into the midst of Egypt. And Moses said, Thus said the Lord, About midnight will I go out into the midst of Egypt. And all the firstborns in the land of Egypt shall die. From the firstborn of Pharaoh that seated upon the throne, even unto the firstborn of the maid servants that is behind the meal, and all the firstborns of beasts. And there shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt, such as there was none like it, nor shall be like it any more. But against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue, against man or beast, that ye shall know that the Lord doth put a difference between the Egyptians and the Israelites. See, this one is interesting. This is where they actually said, God is going to put a difference. Is this only now that there, there had been a difference? No. They were saying, this is just an emphasis that if you are not noticed from a particular point that God was already differentiating between the Egyptians and the Israelites, know it now that God, when you are in Christ, there comes a point in your life where God demarcates. He makes the difference to be clear. It's not going to be that, oh, uh, yes, this one is serving God. Look at the way her life is. That one is serving God. Look at the way his life is. No, no, no. There's going to be a pitch perfect demarcation. People are going to see you both standing, right? You might have the same degree. You might have the same whatever and whatever. But God is just going to so push your life to some place that they are going to look at it and the, and the difference will be so clear. It says that ye may know how that the Lord doth put a difference between the Egyptians and the Israelites. See, God is about to put somebody in a place where there will be a difference between that person and the Israelites. There will be a difference between that person's life and the people of the world. People will not be confused. People will not be shocked. People will not misunderstand the fact that you are a child of the king. People will not be confused. They will know it will be distinct. It will be clear because of what God is about to do in your life. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but you need to believe me that God is about to take you to a place where there will be a clear demarcation between you as a child of God and the children of the world, between you as 
as a child of God and the children of the devil. There will be a clear demarcation. It's about time we stop playing church and we serve God wholeheartedly so that God can begin to wrought these mighty miracles in our lives and people will begin to see them and glorify our Father in heaven, who is in heaven and people will begin to see them and want to know the God we're serving. So who is this God? How did he make this happen? That is the level we need to get to people. We need to get to that level. And that's where God is taking us to. But it takes you staying connected to God. It takes you staying connected. It takes you getting soaked in the word. It takes you getting a time out with God. Communion and fellowship with God. It takes you that much. But it is worth it. Oh yes, it's all worth it. God will make a clear difference between the children of the Egyptians and the Israelites. Between the Egyptians and the Israelites, there's going to be a clear demarcation. There had been before. The hillstones fell in Egypt, but it didn't fall in Goshen. Cattles or fleeces or whatever came on Egypt, it didn't come in Goshen. From about the fourth or the third miracle, that's how it kept happening. It was happening in Egypt, it wasn't happening in Goshen. So the demarcation was not, only, it was not only going to be clear right now, it had been from the beginning, but it looks like the people were not noticing it. So God had to emphasize to make them understand that this is also one of the things he's doing in the process. He's making sure that he gets to a point where there is a pitch perfect demarcation between the Egyptians and the children of Israel. So it goes on to verse 8 and say, And all these thy servants shall come down unto me, and bow down themselves unto me, saying, Get thee out, and all the people that follow thee, and after that I'll go out. And he went out from Pharaoh in a great anger. And the Lord said unto Moses, Pharaoh shall not hearken unto you, that my wonders may be multiplied in the land of Egypt. And Moses and Aaron did all the wonders before Pharaoh. And the Lord had in Pharaoh's hat, so that he would not let the children of Israel go out of his land. <laughs> so even after Moses went and did that, he still didn't just let them go. God had already said he was going to do something amazing. Up until he has told Moses to tell the people to borrow jewels. God had already said, see, God is the God of the 11th hour. God is never late. Yes, yes, believe me on that one. I know what I'm talking about. God is never late. He is always on time and he's always on point. God is never, ever late. Don't let anybody deceive you. Don't let anybody convince you otherwise. If it's not happening now and you've checked for sin in your life and there's no sin, just hold on and hold out. Hang in there. God is never ever late. Don't be at the edge of your breakthrough and then you miss it. God is never late. They are counterfeit, oh yeah. They they sure are counterfeit. So you need to be vigilant. You need to be sensitive. You need to be intuitive, oh Lord. You need to ask God for discernment to be able to discern. There are some things that are good, but they're not God things. God wants you to do the God things, not the good things. Because you can do all things, but not all things are expedient. Oh, yes. David could build God a temple, but it wasn't going to be him building the temple. It was going to be Solomon. Not all good things are God things. We want to do the God things. If we want to stay in his perfect will, we want to do the God things. So you see, Moses goes on and does this thing and then Pharaoh doesn't do anything and Moses leaves that place in so much anger. And God says, my son, you know, he's not going to hack into whatever you just said. But you know why he's not hacking into whatever you're saying? Because my miracle is going to so happen in all of Egypt and these people are going to be in total shock. They're going to be in total shock. I like a part here. I think I, I saw this part and it says, Oh yeah, get it out and all the people that follow thee and after that I will go out. And he went out from Pharaoh's place. And so yeah, so a lot of people, he was saying that a lot of people are going to get to know God. They're going to get to bow down, you know, themselves to God that he serves, to the God that he serves, you know. Yeah, 
sometimes when some people get an experience or when they get a little bit of the feel or when they're ministered to by someone who has been there done that it kind of ministers it kind of flows you know like that that's how it works that's what works anyways this is where we're going to be wrapping up today with a chapter and a that god told you something and it looks so much like this is just the thing boom doesn't mean it's going to happen immediately sometimes it can be annoying sometimes it can be irritating but trust god god has said he's going to do it he's going to do it it could be 11:59. if god says he was going to do it today it will be in today like your today i don't know when your today is ending but even if it means it's just about 11:59, god can still come through for you so don't give up don't back out You've come too far from where you started. Nobody's saying the road will be easy. But of course, I really don't believe. I know the God I'm serving. I really don't believe that he's going to bring you this far to leave you. No. So you can't give up now. You can't afford to throw in the towel. No. You have to keep at it. You just can't give up now. You've come too far, darling. You've come too far, reality. You just can't give up up now so people all is well that ends well <laughs> thank you for being here today with us on a chapter today i'm really grateful thank you all for being here i really appreciate it god bless you and uh, i'm hoping that you're going to be with us tomorrow exodus chapter 12 and i'm trusting and hoping that we're going to have a soul time together thank god it's friday okay i don't know about if inspire grizzles corner has already gone live or she's yet to go live but whichever way if she has gone live already i'll share the link on my wall so you can go there and get blessed and get to learn if she has not gone live yet then when she does i'm still going to share the links either way so let's say a prayer and sign out of here <laughs> and say adios or au revoir or bye bye for now Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your word. We pray that your word is going to help us transform us and lead us to the place where you want us to go. Lord, we're not only going to be hearers of your word, we're going to be doers as well. Because it's in the doing that the blessings come. Lord, help us to trust in you, to rely on you, and to stay connected to the vine. Because the branches can only grow and the fruits can only be born if we're still connected to the vine. So Lord, help us to stay connected and do it right. Thank you, King of Glory, because I know you've heard and answered in Jesus' name we pray. I always get to say I love you so, so, so freaking much. But God loves you way more. Get to like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you get all our updates each time we upload a new video or we get to go live. I love you all so, so very much. But I got to go. Bye-bye.